Hello, Accelerated Math 6-7 students. We are working in Module 6, and this is Lesson 2. Um, the name of our lesson is Describing the Center of a Distribution Using the Mean. Okay. So here are our notes. And, okay. Okay. Describing the Center of a Distribution Using the Mean. Um, yesterday we talked about a lot of information um, discussing what distribution is and understanding distribution. And today we're going to talk about the center of distribution using the mean. I'm not quite sure how much exposure you've had to the word mean before, but we will get there. Our goal for today, today we will learn how to determine the fair share or the mean of a data set. The question that I want you to be thinking about is, how do you use data displays to understand the data? All right, so the best way to practice this or to figure out the answer to that question is, is by trying it. So we have this little opportunity called Picket Fun. Five friends are eating at Peter Piper Pizza. After they ate, they played some games and earned some tickets. All five friends came back to their table and counted their tickets. There were a lot of tickets. The totals are 10, 15, 8, 4, and 2. Can you determine each friend's fair share? Okay. Um, and so to do this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to organize our data. Because yesterday we talked about um, different types of data, numerical data or categorical data. And for this specific example, it's going to be numerical data because we're given numbers of tickets. Okay. And so our first job is we're going to learn how to make a dot plot of the number of tickets. So the name of our graph would be number of tickets. And you write it as a title. Okay, and so that's the title of our graph. All right, now the second thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what would be a good numerical range to show these different sizes of tickets. And our lowest number is two, our highest number is 15, we have 10, 8, and 4, and so as you can see, it's spread pretty far. So I'm thinking probably a good spread would be if we could do 0 to 15, okay? So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to write 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And my line keeps going, so I'll keep going. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Okay, so I got 29 tick marks. Do they need to be that small? But I just did because I um, needed to write it. So one is here, two is here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. I labeled all of those marks on my um, number line. So now I'm going to put a um, dot, because we're making a dot plot, that represents each fair share of the tickets. Okay, so what we can see is there were five friends, and the totals of their tickets were 10, 15, 8, 4, and 2. So if I come over here to 10, I'm going to put a dot above 10, because one person had 10 tickets. Then I'm going to go to 15, and I'm going to put a dot, and one person had 15 tickets. One person had 8 tickets, and one person had 4 tickets, and one person only had 2 tickets. Okay, and so this is what a dot plot of our data would look like. All right, and now what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how could we see um, how each friend had the same amount of tickets. Now let's see how we could give every friend the same amount of tickets. We are going to draw a box to represent each ticket. What is the friend's fair share? Okay, so if we take a look at that, we have another number line. And this time, we're going to use boxes to represent each ticket. So this time, we're going to put the friends down at the bottom instead of the numbers at the bottom. So we would say, this is friend number one, friend number two, 
friend number three, friend number four, and friend number five. Okay? And so we're just going to go in the order that the numbers happen. So it says friend number one had ten tickets. So it says we're going to draw a box to represent each ticket. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this friend has ten tickets. Okay? The next friend had fifteen tickets. Okay? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm going to keep going right here, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so friend number two had 15 tickets, okay? Friend number three has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight tickets for that friend. Friend number four had four tickets. One, two, three, four. And friend number five only had two tickets. One, two. So as we can see by drawing these boxes, we now have a picture in our mind about the tickets that each child had. Now the problem was though is it says what is each friend's fair share? So if we're looking at fair share, what they mean by that is everybody should have the same amount of tickets, okay? And as you can see, friend number five only has um, two, while friend number two has 15. So what we have to figure out is what would be the fair share for each person, okay? So the way that I like to do it is I like to move the boxes. So I'm going to show you this by changing pen color so you can see the difference. So what that could do is I could take one from friend two and give it to friend five. So now they have three. So three, four, um, eight, 14, and 10. So I'm thinking I can still keep going. So if I take another one, so now we have four, four, um, eight, um, 13, and 10. So let's keep going. I'm going to give one here. So that's five. I'm going to give one here. That's five. So now these two have five. This one has eight. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and this one still has ten. So if I give this one another one, that's going to be six. If I give this one another one, then that's going to be seven, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, let's see, let's turn this one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one still has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one has nine, and this one still has ten. So this one has seven. Okay, so now this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to stop there. And let's put this one over here. And we're going to take that from here. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so these two still have seven, these two have eight, and this one has nine. So if I take this one away and I give it over here, then that would mean this guy has eight, this guy has seven, this guy has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it would be eight, 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 and seven if we did it that way, right? Okay, so I'm not sure if that's what we want to do. I'm wondering if everybody should have seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is an extra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is an extra. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And these two are extra. So that means that we have one, two, three, four extras, and there's five people. So if we have, let's do it over here. We have four holes, right? Two, three, four. But we 
have five people. So we're going to put um, minus eight. One, two, three, four, five. So that means we have to split this up into five, this up into five, this up into five, and this up into five. So one fifth to you, one fifth to you, one fifth to you, one fifth to you, and one fifth to you. So that means we have one fifth here, one fifth from the next one, one fifth from the next one and one-fifth from the next one. So this person right here gets one, two, three, four, four-fifths. So on here, we're going to put four, two, three, four, four-fifths is what they get. Okay? So in this line, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four-fifths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four-fifths. Okay, because they would all get four fifths because we'd get one from here, one from here, one from here, and one from here. That's four. One from here, one from here, one from here, and one from here. And so we would do that each time. So each person now we know that the fair share, fair share for each person equals um seven old, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four fifths. So that would be the fair share. Okay? And so do you see how we can adjust the boxes so that they are equal? Now, the other thing that I want you to think about with fair share is fair share means that each friend has the same amount. Well, if you can take that idea from fair share and realize that what fair share actually is doing is it's finding the mean. Okay, and now let's do that numerically and see if, if this is a true statement. You have learned in the previous school years that if you take all of your data, so 10 plus 15 plus 8 plus 4 and plus 2, and you add it all together, so right here you have 10 plus 9, so that's 19, regroup the 1, so that's 39. So we have 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. So that is 39 total tickets, right? And then what you do is you take the 39 total tickets and you divide it by the number of friends. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5 friends. Then you will know that 39 divided by 5 equals 7 and 4 fifths. So as we just proved by doing the mean the way that you learned and also learning about fair share, do our fair share amounts match the mean? And the answer is yes. So now you just proved that fair share is the exact same thing as finding a mean of a data set. Okay. Now some of you are thinking, why in the world is she teaching us fair share? Well, the reason why we want to teach fair share is because it says describing the center of the distribution. Right now, the center of our distribution, if you go back to those graphs that we talked about yesterday, this graph right here would be skewed right because if you draw the graph, like I taught you yesterday, the curve is high on this side and it goes down on this side. Does everybody see that? So this graph is called skewed right because it focuses high on this side and down on the other side. Remember from yesterday? And so if we're talking about describing the center of the distribution, well, the center is over here, and we want it to be a fair share. So when we move it, it's all the same height. So now our graph, because we moved all these extras, they are all going to be a graph that just goes straight across. And so you could say now, because we changed it, we can say that our graph truly has a symmetrical look to it because everybody has the same amount, okay? And so really you can see just by doing this little activity all the different things that we talked about in our lesson yesterday and we proved that fair share means finding the mean of the data set, okay? So today we will learn how to determine the fair share or the mean of a data set, which is what we did, and then our question, how do you use data displays to understand data? 
the answer to that question is you can actually see them and you can see what they mean. So this is a dot plot. This is a box plot to help us figure out what it looks like. Okay? And that's all I have for you today. All right. See you later. Bye.